now that uh, we have uh, installed Darsan runtime and done some uh, utilities, we can go ahead and try to experiment with uh, one of our uh, applications that we have in our directory. So uh, you will see we have two, three, four different directories, directory one, directory four. Each of them has uh, applications that we will uh, uh, have to uh, monitor their uh, IO uh, access patterns and uh, performance. Uh, with uh, uh, this tutorial, we will experiment with uh, directory one, and uh, then for the rest, uh, you can just uh, read the readme file and try them on your own following the same more or less uh, procedure. So uh, let's see what directory one has. I will use the GitHub views, so it will be maybe a bit easier. So it has a readme file where we uh, describe um, more or less the content of uh, the directory and how you can run it. And then uh, we see that there are two bus scripts. The first is the file per process .sh and the other one is the single shared .sh. So uh, these bus scripts are actually the ones that we use to compile the uh, file per process .c and uh, ssf uh, .c single uh, shared file .c um, uh, uh, source files and make the uh, executables out of them. Uh, the file per process is of course an application that uh, will use uh, a, a process uh, to write data in a private file. No other process will access this file. And the single shared file, it's uh, an application where uh, one process will create a file and then all the processes that run will write in the same file. And we would like to run these and see the difference they made in the uh, performance and how we can uh, visualize that using Darsan. So let's go ahead and um, open first the source file of uh, a single shared file and then open also the file per process and see what it looks like. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up for um, the write call and for the open call. So here is the uh, MPI file write, and we see that uh, this one is happening in this uh, file descriptor. Okay, and this uh, file descriptor uh, is actually generated using this command, the MPI file open where we pass as a parameter the path that it is the name of the file. And uh, we have this print where, uh, just, just above, where we print uh, which rank opens which uh, file. And uh, of course, uh, the file comes uh, as a, a parameter. We will see that into the bus scripts how we get it. Then let's go to the file per process and see the difference between these two. Yes, so it's again the same write uh, in a file descriptor that is generated from this open. Uh, again, we have the same uh, print, but now look that uh, we are actually manipulating the file path to include uh, also the rank information since we want each process to write in um, its own uh, um, private file. Uh, how do we do that? We do that using this sprintf here where it gets the workspace uh, space, but also adds as an underscore the rank. So this way we guarantee that each process will have its own private file. Now that we've looked into these two, let's uh, see uh, what the bus scripts um, are uh, about. And let's start with the file per process. So the first part of the script is just to uh, parse the command line arguments. Uh, we have two command line arguments for this. We have the number of clients and the number of MPI uh, 
uh, ranks per client, the number of processes per client. Um, since you are running it in a virtual machine, um, we, we always have to put here one and we do not really uh, consider these uh, uh, parameters since we don't consider uh, having a host machine with uh, lots of uh, clients to be used. Then the other important uh, thing that you will see in all these bus scripts is uh, that we have as an SRC here a variable that we specify the source file to be uh, compiled and then the bin that specifies the uh, file name of the generated executable. We use MPICC to compile the source file and we generate uh, the executable with the name we have specified here. Uh, then we have another parameter that it is called output that this one specifies where the data that are being generated by the job will be stored. For your virtual machine, this should be like that and it would be uh, fine. If you run in another environment, maybe you, you want to uh, store the data in a parallel file system to uh, have uh, better understanding of the results. Last and uh, most important is the uh, how you initiate the job and uh, this is usually done by the MPI run. Uh, we specify the number of uh, processes that we want to initiate, the actually executable, and then we pass as a parameter here the amount of data that we want to write. This is something that it is configurable so you can experiment and give different amount of sizes, see how this impacts performance and of course the uh, output where this will be stored. Uh, traditionally, you would only have this one. Now that we want to have Darsan dynamically, uh, uh, Darsan library dynamically link with the application and trace uh, the IO uh, uh, generated from, from the application, we just uh, include LDP reload and then the Darsan library. Uh, path. Uh, for this one to work for you, you will have to have an environmental uh, uh, a variable that would be called Darsan lib, and you will have to set it to the absolute path of where this library will be located. Let's go ahead and set this uh, thing uh, for our case. So for me, I had uh, just uh, installed it in the local dir that would be uh, in the Darsan directory underneath the Darsan runtime and then the lib and here we will find the library. Sorry. So apart from that, what else we have to make sure uh, that we set up as environmental uh, variables is the Darsan log file. Let's go a bit further back and uh, review. Uh, when we were compiling Darsan, we had specified this configuration parameter that was with log path by n. And then we had Darshan log path. This is the environment variable that we want to set up and give the path where Darshan will um, store the log file. Let's set up this for our case also. I will make it in the current directory. Now we are more or less ready to start and compile and uh, uh, launch the applications. What I want you to make sure is that you always have an MPI version in your system and also you would like to have a quite new GCC. Uh, now these both executables and all the executables uh, that uh, uh, are generated uh, uh, will be able to modify the, the file size that they will write, the amount of data so let's go once more 
I own that and I want you to remember that you can modify this parameter that it is how much data you will have to write. Uh, but the bash script that we use to compile and launch will take as a parameter, as I said, number of client nodes and the number of uh, processes per client. So let's start with the single shared file. Of course, we have first to go into the proper directory. And uh, to make sure uh, I have made a bit of uh, modification here. Um, so I, I have just replaced the output file and made it in a GPFS mount uh, that we have in our uh, laboratory. So the results that we will obtain would be more interesting than just having it in the TMP directory. And uh, the same also applies for the file per process. Yeah. But apart from that, the rest uh, is as you uh, will get it from uh, the repository. So let's continue with uh, uh, the uh, compilation and uh, to launch the applications, the sequential and the file per process. So make sure that you have already set up the uh, environment variables that we have uh, discussed. So. The first one would be where you will find the Direson library. We need this one. You have to specify the installation directory. For me, I have it um, installed it in my uh, in in the folders uh, inside the uh, the repo. So this would be in the subdirectory of runtime under the lib. Uh, sorry, you have to do export there. Yes. So apart from that, you remember that when we were configuring Darson, we had to specify also we, we specify uh, also this one that it is the environment variable that we will use to specify the output directory and uh, uh, for the log paths. Again, we have to export this one and I will make it as a current directory. So this variable specifies once again where Darson will store the output file, the log file. We are now ready then. Let's start with a single shared file. We give one client and eight processes. As we can see here, it says it's running through a block of uh, 64 megabytes. Uh, we discussed before we can modify uh, that in the bus script. And uh, we also report the bandwidth and the time it took, of course. It, the total number of bytes, it was uh, really small, like a half a gigabyte. And that's why we get really good uh, performance uh, uh, here. So there is lots of uh, caching uh, involved in this uh, case. Let's now execute also the file per process the same way again. And let's observe the results. Yeah, we see that the bandwidth didn't really have uh, any any difference since the amount of data that we write is uh, really small. However, we will be able to observe uh, the um, uh, outputs and the differences in uh, the Darson reports. So here, what I want you to see is uh, that each rank writes on its own um, file. These two um, executions that uh, we made generated these two log files. The first one is from the file per process and the other one is for the single shared file. We will use the Darson utilities now 
to generate the reports. Uh, if you have installed it in the local div as uh, I did, you will find it in the bin directory. And I will just, just first use the Tarsan job summary and execute it for the file per process. And I will do the same for the single shared file. So these two commands generate these two PDFs that will contain this information. And uh, here are the PDF uh, reports that uh, Darson job summary uh, generated. The first one on my uh, left is the file per process and the other one on the right is the shared uh, single file. So we can see that uh, on the top there is a job ID, the UUID, the number of processes used, the runtime of the actual uh, job. And uh, then we have the IO performance estimates. And uh, here in the estimates, you can clearly see that when we have the file per process, it is uh, uh, way, way better than when we have the single uh, shared file. Of course, don't take these numbers as absolute because uh, the amount of data that we wrote uh, was like really small, only half a, a gigabyte. So caching is very, much uh, involved in this case. So the numbers are not accurate, but they uh, can uh, be there to show us that there is a huge difference between the file per process and the single shared uh, file. Then we have uh, uh, some uh, figures. I think um, the first one uh, gives you a percentage of uh, the runtime in comparison to um, the uh, IO cost and uh, for POSIX uh, there was uh, really nothing but we can see a small uh, blo uh, blue box that it is for uh, the MPIIO, the metadata operation that took a small percentage of their run uh, time. Then in the other uh, uh, figure next to it uh, we have the IO operation counts, how uh, many uh, times these uh, IO operations were called and uh, we have a uh, uh, pair uh, interface. So for us uh, now here, we used uh, uh, MPIIO, but of course there are deposit calls uh, always included there because there were uh, some uh, standard uh, uh, rights to the uh, standard output and the standard uh, error. And these are also measured, but uh, it's not that uh, are interesting uh, in, respect to the benchmark. Then we have the POSIX access uh, sizes, and we have also the MPI IO access sizes. And uh, here we have it for write and for read, but we only see the write because there was not any read involved. Uh, after that, we have the common, uh, most common access sizes for POSIX and for MPI. IO, we see here that uh, for MPIIO it's, it's the same and uh, all processes did these uh, 64 megabytes uh, uh, writes. And uh, for POSIX, it's just uh, the message is printed in the standard output, so there is nothing really significant uh, here. Um, you can correlate also the MPIIO. Uh, to the IMPIIO access uh, sizes, but it is, it is also in this, uh, this range. So uh, also we see the file count summary. We have the total files that were opened and also the files that were created. For the file per process, we see that there were 17 files created, where for the uh, single shared file, there were only three files created. So in uh, the next page of the report, we have uh, uh, the first three figures that are uh, a, a time span. So in the Y axis, we have the, the MPI ranks in the first one. And in the X axis, we have uh, the time. And then it shows uh, the operations that they perform in uh, relation to 
to the time and um, we see here uh, that we only have uh, write operations we did not do any read and uh, this covers only POSIX and STDIO so it does not cover MPI that is not so interesting results for our experiments uh, then we have the average cost per uh, process uh, average IO uh, per process uh, this is again for POSIX and uh, STDIO so the results are not really interesting for us so we have um, for several operations independent read writes metadata and uh, the same for uh, shared read writes and metadata uh, then we have a table where we have uh, uh, aggregated per file system the i operations uh, uh, that uh, took place for POSIX and STDIO and in the other page we have a graph where we can see for uh, the POSIX uh, IO pattern some statistics uh, both for read and for the write operation uh, here uh, we see uh, that um, there was not any uh, sequential or uh, conservative uh, IO uh, in uh, the way that uh, um, the application uh, used the POSIX uh, IO and uh, yeah, that more or less uh, concludes what we, we can get from the report and now let's continue and uh, we will use the parser Darson parser to uh, output in a text uh, format the same uh, information so this takes quite uh, a lot that's why I will uh, store them in a file and then we can look at the file together. So here is the output from uh, the Darson uh, parser. Uh, the first file, the first part of uh, this uh, file contains uh, information that it is uh, related uh, to the job, uh, the actual command that was executed, uh, job ID start and time, number of processes, stuff like that. Uh, then uh, the next uh, part contains uh, information that it is uh, related to the uh, regions of uh, within the log file so uh, which part of the log file contains uh, which data again it's not that interesting for us um, the next table that we see is the table of the mounted uh, file system uh, the machine uh, had uh, following that, we have uh, uh, some uh, formatted uh, I.O. characteristics. So um, the results presented here will be for uh, the modules that uh, or the interfaces that Darson can uh, trace I.O. that it is POSIX, uh, HDF5, MPI I.O. and uh, PNET CDF and uh, for each of these modules uh, we have some uh, characterization fields for uh, uh, its uh, operation and uh, here is the description of, uh, of these columns uh, we will uh, go in more uh, details in uh, example below then uh, we have a description of the POSIX counters uh, it's uh, and, uh, every single counter that uh, it contains uh, statistics. It lists here uh, the meaning of it. And the same happens for uh, the rest of the modules. And here is an example of this table where we have uh, at the module column that it is POSIX. Then we have uh, uh, the rank. Then we have the record uh, ID that it is uh, a hash of the actual um, file that it was opened uh, then it follows by the counter we give the value of the counter following the, but the actual uh, file name the mount point where we have uh, uh, mounted uh, the file system and then it is the file system type uh, similar information that will be for the rest uh, of the modules so uh, now since we have uh, already went through these two uh, main tools uh, we will uh, use uh, also the Darsan extended module to run a test and see what is the 
uh, outcome uh, when we use this and uh, as uh, we say here in the readme to do so we have to export this uh, variable so we export this variable and now Darson will be able to collect that punch uh, IO statistics for every intercepted uh, IO call. To the next step is to run again the command. Let's say we will run the application that generates uh, IO in a single shared file. We have to wait a bit for the application to finish again we see it's uh, uh, rank its process of the application writes a 64 uh, megabyte to uh, this file now there is this uh, log file generated by Darsan that contains the DXT information to generate a report for that we would have to use the DXT uh, parser, that's DXT parser. Here is um, the command that we can use to do so. And uh, of course, the output is quite large. I will store it in a file and then we can look at it uh, together. So the first part uh, of the file is more or less identical as in the other one. The second part is again, the same as in the other one, uh, information uh, regarding the log file, then the mounted file system, we had exactly the same uh, as in the other one again. But now is the more uh, interesting uh, part. Uh, here we have the DXT uh, POSIX module that will contain the operations that they did for POSIX. Here are the POSIX uh, information, just um, not, uh, not related to our uh, uh, application uh, IO and then this is uh, the DXT MPI IO that are related to our application IO and here we can see for example that uh, rank 0 wrote to this uh, file ID and this is the file name and then they list the IO operations that uh, they did so here they have a write segment 0 and then it lists the offset, the length, and the start and the end time. And it uh, reports such information for every single process that uh, uh, did the MPIIO. For example, the rank six you see here, it's more or less identical as the other one since all of the processes perform uh, uh, the same type of IO. The only difference that uh, you can observe is the difference of the offset. Uh, since the offset uh, varies depending on the rank. So, and uh, with that, we conclude uh, the uh, execution of the application that they were contained in the uh, directory one. Uh, you can experiment and play with uh, the parameters, and of course, uh, would be really uh, uh, interesting to experiment with uh, the other applications as for example in the uh, second directory again there is a readme file here you can read and uh, understand how uh, and what are these uh, in, uh, applications uh, are doing and uh, run the same commands that we used to uh, experiment and uh, um, analyze the IO activities. So, and with that, I would like to thank you, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, you learned something from uh, this tutorial.